Hey gang, welcome back to another Tin Man Customs. Here's a look at one of my older customs that I had done, and this is going way back to a G1 figure, and this is G1 Galvatron. And this was actually a Junker figure that I bought at BotCon for, I think, probably about seven or eight bucks. And he didn't have his didn't have his cannon and didn't have some of his other accessories with him, but I knew I wanted to customize him and make him end up looking more like his cartoon version. This is what he looked like in the cartoons, and that's the actual toy we got back in the day. Really didn't look anything like the animated version, so that's what I was going for. And let's see, what do we start with here? I had to come up with a way of making this cannon because I didn't have one. I hope to eventually swap that out. And it's been a number of years ago that I made this figure, so I should probably start looking for a replacement cannon for him. And I did a little bit of sculpting on the head. I wanted him to look like a G1 toy, but have a little bit more feel of the character in the in the show. So I gave him his crown that uh, was missing on the original toy, and also pulled his helmet in a little on the sides and gave these little uh, sides to the helmet. They were cut all the way back on the actual toy. These were cut all the way back here. So I wanted him to still be able to transform. So that's why some of the head is still very cylindrical and narrow. So uh, I kind of liked it. It uh, still looks G1, but uh, looks a little more like the actual character. Now, his cannon was, I'm sure it's obvious that that's a Sharpie marker body that uh, we had cut into and the cannon, let me move around here to where I can pull this off. The base of this is actually a cheap Big Lots KO of one of the aerial bots and uh, the width was the correct width to fit around his arm and use some styrene and added a peg that fit in this slot that was already on the figure. I believe that's where his actual toy cannon clips on. And it fits in tightly, rests on there and clamps around. But you are also still able to pull this off for transformation which we'll do in just a moment. Some of the putty work in this is really kind of messy. I was just trying to get it all to stick together. Um, I'll probably go back and smooth some of that out. This is, let's see, I think this circular part was another piece off of a Mega Man armor figure. Uh, I had used I had used the same armor set for um, a previous video that I had shown uh, his animated cup figure, which I used that for his weapon, uh, made a hammer out of it. And the colors, uh, this one, this is one of the one, one of the times that all the paint went on really smooth and just really nice. Really nice. Actually worked on this guy while I was on a camping trip with the family. They, uh, I'm not a big camper, but they uh, talked me into going with them one year, and they always brought crafts and scrapbooking sort of projects that they would work on while they were while we had evenings free. And so I brought this guy to work on and uh, dismantled him painted him up and put him back together and he came out really well. 
He's still missing a few of the accessory bits. Uh, it doesn't have any electronics in him, but I figured for eight bucks, ends up looking like a nice uh, G1 Galvatron on my shelf. So let's go ahead and transform him up as he does still transform. <laughs> Here he is in his robot mode, or cannon mode, and he is still functional. Uh, there's a piece here that uh, formed his scope in the original figure that would rotate around to his backside uh, while in robot mode. So he looks like he's got a little bit of a shallow part there. But this will fit in and fill up that spot. Uh, made sure the Sharpie body fits in there just fine. And there he is. So I was never really keen on the Galvatron character in the way he was portrayed in the cartoon. But figure-wise, I liked him better because he actually turned into a tank cannon as opposed to a pistol that someone else had to hold. So uh, I kind of liked that better. So there he is there. So I'm going to switch him back real quick to robot mode for a final look. All right, so here he is back in robot mode. Flip that up. And one more thing forgot about that I had done was inside here there's a magnet there and there to help clamp that in good and tight so that works out limbs are a little loose on parts of him here his arms are a little floppy uh, might be able to fix that with some more floor polish trick um, but there he is. I always like to try and find to flush out my G1 collection. I kind of like finding figures that are a little beat up, uh, a little rough around the edges, and uh, fixing them up, cleaning them up, that sort of thing. Because then it feels a little more like your own figure when you put it in your collection as opposed to someone else's toy that they had for 30 years. Uh, that was always one of the things that was really exciting as a kid was getting these figures and having to put the stickers on them and then it felt a little more personalized, like it was yours. So that's what I go on by trying to flesh out my collection of G1 figures. I've been collecting since I was a kid, so uh, it's kind of nice getting an entire set together. So. This was one of those figures in the right direction. I never liked the figure as a kid, but uh, now that this is in my collection, I really, uh, I really like it all done up like this. So give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, comment and let me know what you think. And uh, if you really like what you see, hit subscribe as I will always have more figures in the works. Thanks a lot for stopping by.